I recently did a video comparing render times in Adobe Premiere on three of the top laptops that I could get a hold of. The MacBook Pro 15 inch with touch bar all the way spec'd out, the Surface Book with performance base all the way spec'd out, and a gaming laptop from a company called Razer. The laptop's called the Razer Blade. Now again, this was not meant to be a laptop comparison. It was simply showcasing a, a task that I do every single day in Premiere on these different machines to kind of illustrate how that works on those machines. In that video, it was pretty apparent that the Razer Blade just kind of whooped the rest of their butts. Um, it also happens to have the most powerful GPU in it, and go figure, it was able to do the super graphics intensive job of rendering footage the fastest. The MacBook, on the other hand, which is probably the laptop most people think of when they think of editing video, uh, but also has the least most powerful graphics card, did the worst. Now you would think that's pretty definitive, right? It's not. While it is true that if you were using Premiere and you're just looking for uh, the speed and performance of using the footage as well as the speed of rendering times, then the other laptops are definitely gonna be better for you than the new MacBook Pro. But as I briefly mentioned at the end of that video, if you use Final Cut, all of that goes out the window. Let me show you what I mean. Here are the times from the original video. And now here is the MacBook Pro running the same four minutes of 4.6K footage from my Blackmagic Ursa Mini 4.6K out at the same codec and resolution of the Premiere test, which is the equivalent of the 4K YouTube preset. 27 minutes in Premiere becomes about five minutes in Final Cut and is even less than half the time of the winning Razer Blade 2016. Crazy, right? As far as I could tell though, from talking to a bunch of professional editors who edit for feature films, for TV, at production houses, you name it, they do a lot of editing. Uh, it comes down to optimization. Apple makes the software, Final Cut Pro. They also make the hardware, in this case, the MacBook Pro. And in doing that, they can actually do a lot more optimizations between the two than say Premiere, which runs on a ton of different machines, and Windows, which is also on a ton of different machines, different hardware manufacturers, etc. So why would you use Premiere if Final Cut is so much faster? Well, besides personal preference, which does play a part in just workflow and how you like to use it, there are a few factors that kept coming up every time I asked editors this exact question. Uh, and also, there were editors that told me why Premiere was better and ones that told me why Final Cut was better, and they're both not wrong. Let's just point that out. We'll get into that later, but they're not wrong. But I wanna just go through really quick the pros to each of them so that everybody kind of understands why you would choose Premiere or Final Cut over the other. First up, Final Cut Pro 10. As mentioned, the optimization of the software built specifically for the hardware makes it probably the fastest editing program in the world. So speed is a huge factor. Because of those optimizations, by the way, that help with speed, they also help with battery life. So this is another factor for people that are using Final Cut Pro. The magnetic timeline. For a lot of editors, this actually is not a feature, it is a gripe. Most of them have come from the world of Final Cut 7 or any other editing software, uh, and they're used to having tracks. They're used to just having a bunch of different tracks to where they could put the video, the audio, and all that other stuff. And so when Final Cut 10 was released and it got rid of that and gave this magnetic thing, people were not happy. But when it's used in conjunction with some features in Final Cut Pro 10, for example, auditions, you can select multiple takes of a clip, have them easily swap in and out in a specific part of the video with the timeline automatically adjusting everything around it, even if the clips are all different lengths. And lastly, a better UI. Simply put, Final Cut Pro 10 is more intuitive than Premiere. Common actions that might take multiple clicks in Premiere just take less in Final Cut 10. Beyond that, it's just a cleaner looking interface that quote unquote gets out of your way when editing. 
Now, as far as Adobe Premiere is concerned, here were the points that editors kept bringing up in favor of that. The track-based editing allows for editors to better organize their footage. All the sound effects for the clip can go on one track, all of camera one on one, camera two on another, background music on one, vocals on another, etc. This allows for things like adjusting the audio of just one track a whole lot easier and just makes it a lot more organized and easier to look at your footage and get through it and know where you want to make changes, etc. It works with every format, codec, and on every machine. You could throw an MP4, an AVI, MOV, some red footage, five different audio formats, and it will all run cohesively. Not to mention, you can run it on a PC, a Mac, any number of different machines, regardless of the manufacturer of that machine. It can also output in every format, codec, etc. So there's a giant list of options, uh, and for someone just outputting to YouTube, that might not matter. But, for example, editors cutting a commercial for a television network might need to output their video in OMF format to give to the audio guy who then is going to take that and be able to work natively in Pro Tools with the audio that was in the editor's timeline, etc. So, much color grading. While in Final Cut, you can use plugins to get a lot of different color grading options, Premiere has a huge, robust set of color grading options built right in. If you're a YouTuber who is just using the color straight out of your camera, it's not the biggest deal. But if you're shooting raw or log footage and you need to put the color back in, as well as maybe use LUTs and add shades of color for emotional manipulation of the audience, it's a bigger deal. The suite of Adobe. When you get a Creative Cloud account with Adobe, you get all of their software. Programs like Audition, which is used for professional audio editing, After Effects, which is used for professional motion graphics, etc. Not only that, but any files from any Adobe program, like After Effects or Audition, can be pulled into your video's timeline, and if you edit them back in After Effects, for example, it will update in real time in the timeline. And finally, collaboration options, or working in a team. Premiere is just better at being used by groups. Project files can easily be shared with proxies of the footage on everyone's machine, edited and updated in real time across all the editors using team project files. And the footage, the formats, as mentioned before, everything you wanted to do that you would then need to maybe hand off to a different department, a color corrector, the audio guy, whatever, it's just a lot easier to do with Premiere because it's just so much more universally able to be accepted by everyone else's machines and programs, etc. Render times, Final Cut is pretty much gonna win most of the time. Um, it's just hard to beat that optimization of the software with the hardware. Now you can build a machine, especially a Windows machine, that will have equivalent render times, etc. using Premiere but it's gonna take a lot more power to do that. So Premiere kind of sacrifices the speed and all of that optimization for being able to be more universally accepted, be used on more machines, uh, and actually have a little bit more functionality in it as well. At the end of the day, like any other equipment that a filmmaker or an editor would use to have their film become a reality, your editing program is just another tool to get that job done. So in the same way you might use one camera or a lens for a specific project or look or whatever you are trying to get, there is no best editing program. There is maybe a best editing program for your specific project's needs. There you go, guys. Adobe versus Final Cut. I know you all have a lot of opinions about this. Uh, please let me know in the comments below. Try to be nice though, constructive is good. And if you like this video, please thumbs up it or share it, it is greatly appreciated. And if you want more videos like this, please check out my YouTube channel. The link is floating somewhere around here on the screen. Click it, check that out, and if you like what you see there, please subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.